This is Kyle with Liberty Me, here with Dr. Steve Horowitz. Dr. Horowitz is the Charles A. Dana Professor of Economics at St. Lawrence University. Thanks so much for being here, Steve. My pleasure. My pleasure. Glad to be here. Now, I want to preface this by talking about how, obviously, every, um, every book, every movie, uh, every piece of music you listen to, you will view through your own ideological lens. That's, that's absolutely true. And, you know, for the most part, we can't escape our biases. So, you know, do I think it's problematic sometimes looking at movies and music and media and saying, well, this is libertarian? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but it seemed to me watching this Lego movie that it was advocating a kind of free market anarchism. I mean, really, it was just, it was exciting to watch. I mean, what do you think? I mean, it seemed to me that this was extra specially free market. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I'm not even, you know, free market maybe is too precise or too narrow. I think what, what it, what the, the message for me, and again, I just saw it last night, uh, the message for me was about the power of decentralization and, the, and sort of what we were just talking about, sort of comparative advantage and the way in which when people are, that, that freedom is messy. Right. I think that the, 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 for me, the, the vision and I, I won't try to give away the plot at all, but sort of, you know, uh, the, you know, the sort of uh, president of business or whatever his name is, right, sort of is obsessed with perfection and stasis. Right. That the only, he wants a world in which everything's perfect and therefore doesn't move. What bothers him is that change. Right. It bothers him when people do things outside the plan. Right. And so this whole notion uh, of these master builders who construct things without instructions, right, who build from the things, from the, from, the, from the pieces they have in front of them and make these bizarre, strange, messy, imperfect things that work and that are sort of part of helping us be free and to eventually sort of rally against the, the bad guys in this movie, um, that's a great message, it seems to me, and one very congenial with a, with a libertarian vision of, of social order. It's not as if it's pounding away at the free market. And one really interesting thing is, you know, talking to a bunch of people, including John Popola, apparently the guys who made this movie are not at all. In fact, they're anti-libertarian in some sense, right? And it just points out that if they are, yet they've made a movie that resonates so deeply with libertarians, that tells us one of two things, maybe both. One, they have a very impoverished view of what libertarianism is. Two, we have not done a good job conveying libertarianism. If they think that movie isn't sympathetic, isn't congenial to what we believe, then that's on us, right? That's our fault for not having a clearer, uh, a more encompassing vision that would say, this is what we're talking about, right? And that's a really frustrating part of this for me, uh, that, that if that's true, if those guys, you know, thought they were making or didn't, don't like libertarians, didn't want to make a pro-libertarian movie and did by accident, right? Something's not right. <laughs> Something's not right. And I think we bear some blame for that, too, for, for the ways, ways in which we convey our ideas. Oh, without a doubt, there's something wrong. I mean, you have a movie that espouses this beautiful idea of Hayekian local knowledge and that the people on the ground know what they're doing and know what's best for them and that, you know, you can't impose a kind of top-down order on the world. I mean, that's, that is so essentially libertarian. And I, I do think that we've done a, a very poor job if people think that that is not a, a libertarian idea. Yeah, and you know, Nozick has this whole section of his book where he is, is, uh, is critiquing Rawls, and the subtitle is Liberty Upsets Patterns, right? And I think that's a way to think about that movie, too. And I hadn't thought about that connection until just now. But, but the idea that what, what the message there is that free people will never, you can never fix them in place. You can never make them perfect. You can never make them go the way you intend. The world is full of unintended consequences. That's what freedom's about. Well, I think you brought up a really good point whenever you mentioned that the one thing the movie rails against is a kind of top-down teamwork, right? You know, everybody, we're all part of a team, says the government, right? Uh, but, but really, uh, the, the main character, the protagonist, uh, is portrayed to not be very good at anything. You know, people don't think he's very good at anything. But what his real talent is, is organizing a group of very talented individuals and getting them to work together, a very bottom-up teamwork. Yep, and, and, and the way, and notice the one point where they try to work together from an instruction manual, again, I hope we're not spoiling this too much, it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out very well, right? It's, it's really when each of them, you know, the 80s, 80s uh, spaceship 
you know, piece, right? Realizes that now can I build my spaceship and just builds it from the pieces in front of him, right? That that's, you know, that, that's the kind of entrepreneurship, that's the kind of bottom up uh, uh, sort of thing we're talking about here. So yeah, I think it's uh, 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 it, in many ways a marvelous lesson. Now, let's let's be fair to the libertarian critics here and my good friend Sean Malone, for, for, first and foremost among them. It might well be true, as you said at the beginning of this segment, right, that we're reading into it through our own philosophical lenses. And we certainly are. There's no question about that. And whether other people are going to walk out of that movie and go, wow, think about that. Right? It may not be the case. They may just take away, you know, everybody special or, or you know, little people do great things. I mean, whatever. You can imagine a million, million things. And I should say, if, for people who haven't seen the movie, all this philosophical talk aside, the movie, especially the first hour, is just downright hilarious. So, you know, even if you're not, even if you're not particularly curious about or don't care that much or, you know, or, or about the political message, it's a, it's a fun, fun movie. Well, thank you so much, Steve, for being with us today. It's, it's been a pleasure and I look forward to having you back anytime. Anytime. Anytime you're ready, just let me know. Thanks, Tom. Hey, thanks so much. Have a good day. 